Hello everyone and welcome to Angel Healing House and welcome to Walk In Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom for this upcoming week of May 28th through June the 3rd, 2023. My name is Claire Candy Hoff and my name is also Angel Ariel as I had an angelic walk-in experience on January 11th of 2003, which I write about in my award-winning number one Amazon international bestseller, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the autobiography of Angel Ariel. I'd like to welcome back my loyal subscribers, my listeners, my followers. It's lovely to be in your energies again. And thank you so much for liking and sharing and subscribing, recommending the Claire Candy Hoff YouTube channel. And if you are new to my channel, a big welcome to you. Let me share a little bit about myself through my full-time business, Angel Healing House, which I created 20 years ago in 2003. I'm a Reiki master teacher, having taught hundreds and hundreds of Reiki practitioners and master teachers around the world. I'm also an intuitive, a intuitive counselor, a psychic, a um, telepathic tarot card reader, and I also do past life clearings, uh, ancestral healings, as well as those wonderful transformative, re-energizing, recharging Reiki energy healings. And those can be done here in my office in Los Angeles, or they can be done through distant healing online through to any place in the world. If you'd like to book any of my services, uh, please do phone me at Angel Healing House, and that number is 831-277-3716. Three seven one six, or you can go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. Thank you to all of those people who have made donations to my PayPal account uh, for my free content. If you would like to contribute and make a donation, I've left my PayPal link in the description box down below with all of my contact details. Now here on Walk In Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom, uh, we do pull runes, we pull tarot and oracle cards, but before we do that, we look into the astrological heavens to see what planetary energies will be affecting us for the upcoming week. And uh, on May 20th, let's go back a little bit, but on May 20th, we experienced Mars entering Leo. Now, when the fiery, determined energies of Mars uh, gets friendly, a little bit chummy with the basking in the sun energies of Leo, this turns up the heat and it encourages us to unleash our inner star, to step into the spotlight and to be seen. It increases our confidence and it gives an almighty boost to our unstoppable drive to chase our dreams. Like lion's favorite thing to do, once they've hunted down game, once they have bellies full, um, one of their favorite things to do is to roll around play and frolic. Now these energies are encouraging us to play as we revel in our regal natures. Mars will remain in Leo until July 7th um, of this year, 2023, giving us time to embrace the fire in our soul as we unleash our passions and a feeling a sense of heartfelt joy returning as we preen and we celebrate our victories and to go after what we desire most. Step into the spotlight and at this time radiate your light out to the universe because you never know who's watching. Now, right on the heels of this Mars-Leo connection, we had the sun saying and waving goodbye to Taurus, and it's stepping into Gemini season, where it will remain until June 21st. A big happy birthday out there to all of you Geminis. Now, after being in the very grounded energies of Taurus, we now shift to the lighter air energy of Gemini, which is an air sign. And Geminis are all about socializing. They're enjoying the pleasures of life with others as they are light and they are bubbling. 
going from an earth sign like Taurus and soaring up to the lofty heights and the lofty energies of air has us going from the very grounded physical into our mental arena as it draws attention to our thoughts and communication as all air signs do, very much like Libra and Aquarius. With this shift in focus, it might have us asking ourselves, what thoughts do I keep perpetuating? Just because they might be habitual, do they really serve me? Now, with Gemini's focus on our thoughts, we could have moments of great clarity. We could experience aha moments, <laughs> striking ideas and brain waves that we've never had before. You know, but just be careful that you don't fall into the trap of overthinking without making the effort to actually put something into action. Now, to wrap up this month, we will experience the Aldebaran Gateway this very weekend, and that's from May 28th to May 29th. Now, Aldebaran is known as one of the four, four royal stars whose place and appearance in the sky has been considered sacred throughout the centuries by many cultures. It's purported to help manifest fortune, prosperity, abundance, and success, and it acts like a magical genie bathing us in magical energies to fulfill our wishes and our desires. Aldebaran is considered to be the star of enlightenment, and it opens us to channel new, inspired ideas from the universe easily and gracefully. It's also believed to be the home of the Silver Gateway Portal, which is the gateway that souls travel as they travel to and reincarnate once again to Earth. Now, as we approach the end of May, many are feeling lighter. They're feeling more liberated to finally pursue their dreams. And with this energy, my angelic family, who I am part of, we are known as the Posse of Angels. The Posse of Angels is asking all of us if we have the courage, the courage to evolve beyond just speaking about that which we want to see in the world, to then have the absolute audacity to be the example of what that creation looks like for us personally. You know, the recording and the remembering of spiritual knowledge for knowledge's sake it is somewhat of a waste if we do not practically apply it to our own lives. By showing the courage to be authentically who we are, we stop looking outside of ourselves for recognition and we turn inwards to our always ever-present I am God creator source divine eternal natures as the only barometer we will ever need to create a heaven on earth for ourselves and others. By making time to be still enough, to allow ourselves to go within, to focus on that which is inspiring, uplifting, and makes us feel excitement, passionate, and joyful, then we can bring that forth in a creative way that absolutely nourishes, nurtures, and recharges our very soul. Once we know that everything that has ever happened for us, and certainly not to us, was the result of our free will and our choices, we begin to turn an out-of-control train or an unwanted reality into one in which we will experience ease and grace and bring that forth through the very conscious choices that we now make. Do we choose to put our focus and attention on all the things that we do not have, on all the things that are not going well in our lives and in the world, instead of utilizing our God source connection within to affirm that we are abundant? Abundant is abundance is our nature, and through the grace of the divine within, will always we will always be provided for. Saying this aloud will build up a massive amount of energy of being blessed, which opens us up to receive and be in the flow. 
Do we choose to spend our time on social media or do we choose to create something of beauty that, um, uh, sorry, something of beauty that is an expression of God working through us to share with the world. Now, with this in mind, I re recently was giving a client a reading and the message from the posse of angels to her was, where are you scrolling in life? She was astounded as she had the realization that she spent hours on social media and every time she went on it, she would scroll past all the positive messages, the pictures of flowers and puppies and kittens and love, loving family reunions and photos of beautiful scenery until she came to a post that addressed something like how unfair it was to force experimental, experimental drugs on people or uh, the taking away of our liberties and freedoms. And while she read it, she felt that her rage and anger within was justified. And she felt vindicated that she was right to feel this way as someone out there agreed with her. Now, from a higher point of view, from an angel's perspective, she may not have realized it, but she fed and she watered and she expanded and she nurtured and nourished energies of division, separation, rage, and anger, exactly what she didn't want in the world, and indirectly sent that energy out to the universe. So at this time during Gemini's, uh, you know, um, air, lighter energies at, that put our thoughts, uh, put our attention on our thoughts, what we are thinking, um, and uh, the way we communicate, ask yourself, where? Where am I scrolling in my life? Now that we've become enlightened to never giving our power away, because there's nothing in the world that is more powerful than you are, it's time to be daring and fearless and finally listen to that inner voice that is nudging us to do something. Where will you now live that is in greater resonance with who you have become? What will you create? that will absolutely fill your soul. Regardless of what anyone says, regardless if it goes against convention and regardless if it's considered normal, remember that what seemingly self-professed authorities told us in almost every area of our lives was filled with lies and deceit and corruption and at one time was considered normal with each choice that we make that no longer compromises who we are, we take baby steps to set ourselves free. We, set, we take steps to set our souls free. We liberate ourselves from our own self-made prisons of reflecting years of programming to follow what others say is best for us, perhaps to play it small, to listen with our heads, over our hearts. This has kept people locked in fear and shut down to their enormous, miraculous powers of healing and telepathy within. No matter what you have written into your soul contract for this lifetime, and if you wish to find out more about soul, contra soul contracts, please do read my book, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness. That is the prequel to I Am an Angelic Walk in my other novel. No matter what you wrote into your contract, into your book of life, your mission coming back into these physical forms was to grow into your divine connection and to evolve. Now that so many have acquired all the spiritual knowledge that we will ever need, we actually didn't acquire it, we remembered it, as it was gifted in our soul, now that we have cleared and cleansed and healed and forgiven so much, now that we have elevated our consciousness to align with unity, peace, and unconditional love, what will you practically do with all of this to create the life of your deepest desires? You know, at the end of the day, deep down, we all have been blessed with our intuition 
which knows better what is right for us than anyone else. And when I went to my runes to pick a rune, this one came out for today. And it's the rune Suwelu. It is the rune of wholeness. Now that so many of us are moving into a time of wholeness, this rune came up, as many in the collective will now be shown the path to follow, where to live, what work to serve. This will all happen because, in many respects, we have come home to the wholeness within ourselves. So Weilu speaks about our life force energy returning, and with the sun's energy confirming this bright Mars-Leo connection, many of us will be stepping into the spotlight. It also counsels us to open ourselves up, letting the light into those part of our lives that have been secret or hidden or shut away. You know, the funny thing about the feeling of Suwelu's wholeness is that it is something that is acquired not by doing anything or forcing or pushing an agenda, by per, but by permitting our divine eternal nature of that source connectedness and that wholeness to finally flow through us. And uh, by doing something, we can't push an agenda, but by being the energy and the example of it, it gets more attention and more spotlight than anything else. So I was so happy that Sowelu came out. And the next deck that the, uh, and the, the Oracle card deck that the Posse of Angels directed me to was this lovely deck. I haven't used it in a while. It's the Sacred Forest Oracle, and that's by Denise Lynn. Um, and uh, when they directed me to this and I started shuffling, usually I choose two or three cards, but when nine, nine cards all dribbled out together, my first impression was to put them back. But they said, no, take all of the cards and then split them into three and then to read them as a story. Now, the first impression that I received with that many cards that came out, uh, June, it, I get the, uh, um, the intuitive hit that June is bringing many people in the collective, those in the collective, their answers on the, what path to take, on how to serve, new jobs, connecting with new people. A heck of a lot of wish fulfillment could happen all at once for many people. Um, and there will be many things to deal with, especially after the the quiet month of May and the Mercury retrograde season, season that we just came out of as things start to move forward. So here is the story they wish for us to know about uh, these cards that came out. The first group of three, the first group of three that came out were, let's go in this order, New Beginnings, that was the first one. The second was Moonlight Enchantment, and that was magic. And the next one was Water Spirit, Manifesting Dreams. And here's what they had to say about this particular story. Let's see if I can hold them like this. Okay. And the story goes, Brand new beginnings, of course, and fresh starts are coming in. And for many, that will mean success, abundance, increase in finances, and new connections, all prophesied by the energies of the Aldebaran Gateway opening this weekend, May 28th and 29th. The Posse of Angels is saying that, uh, that the wishes that many of us made will be realized, but in many cases, Many cases, they will be fulfilled in magical and mysterious ways, sometimes miraculous ways, to show us how busy spirit has been co-creating with us the life of our dreams, and these will lead to the manifestation of our dreams. So those fresh starts, those new beginnings are coming in because of the feeling of wholeness 
that we have that was mirrored in Suwailu. It's opening doors for the magic, for the magic to, whoops, for the magic to happen in our lives. And this opens up those doors for us to manifest dreams coming in. The next group of three that came out were courage, knowledge, and power. Very, very powerful um, uh, trifecta, if you would, trifecta, if you would, of cards coming out for us. Courage, knowledge, and power together are saying that we all have the spiritual knowledge that we could ever need now, having come home to ourselves and regained our powerful, sovereign, divine, multidimensional natures, knowing nothing is more powerful than we are, what is needed most now is the courage of our convictions to live life to our heartfelt um, desires and our dreams and our intentions. Yes, we can't be any more, I've always said for the last 20 years, <laughs> I've always said that we can't be any more spiritual than we are because we are spirit in human form. We've chosen these physical vehicles to expand and evolve and and to, to grow. Um, so we have all the spiritual knowledge. We've remembered it and now we have to have the courage uh, and the power inside. We have the power inside, but have the courage to utilize that power to bring it out to the world. And this was confirmed with the last three cards that came out, which was leadership, stag spirit, wolf spirit, family, <laughs> and meandering pathway, which is the flow of our lives now which are going to be very different from the flow of our lives in previous years and times. So in the last three cards, these three cards, um, we will be, for many, for many in the collective, we will be shown where, when, and how to be a beacon for others to step into our leadership roles, to inspire others to greater heights. This is a confirmation to step up and be, be the light to help others achieve their heart's fulfillment. The next, the family card here says that we were never meant to accomplish this alone as now that we've come home to ourselves and we've achieved a sense of wholeness, we will attract others who are in direct resonance with our energetic signature, our energies within. Now, many have noticed that their circle of friends has greatly diminished as old karmic contracts have now ended. And this is getting us ready, making space for that new family, that new support to come in. Now, this new soul family, which um, is like us most in energetic signature will come in to support us in some cases emotionally in some cases physically by providing us with new locations to live um, uh, it could be uh, providing uh, finances for our creative projects uh, they'll guide and we will, of course, collaborate with this new soul family and it will, they will feel so comfortable and make us feel like we have come home. All of this culminates in the very last card, which is flow. Flow, our lives now will flow with ease and grace. Now, one of the meanings of this card is that um, up until now, maybe things have been start, stop, start, uh, you know, with um, us being able to fulfill our lives. Now, for many, that means financially. And now, now we will be in the continuous flow um, um, as uh, there is no lack or scarcity in the fifth dimension and higher. Um, it's very significant. It's suggesting that we relinquish control and enjoy the unfolding of the magical ride that will take us where we need to be for our soul's highest good. Enjoy this new adventure. And the Posse of Angels is saying that the more we let go um, of controlling the next part of our ride and our next journey, 
then the more spirit can miraculously co-create the ride of our lives now and take us on that meandering pathway into the flow of our lives. I love, absolutely love that they gave um, me the, the, um, the messages that way. And I don't think they've, they've ever come out with that many cards and told me to group them together. And then, when I went to my tarot cards, and I shuffled, and I shuffled, and I shuffled, nine cards came out as well. And they said, do the same thing and put them in threes and read them that way. The first three that came out was the world. And by the way, I'm using my deck, which is the Angel Healing House Tarot deck. The resurrection card, the judgment. And the next card was the fool. Now these are all major arcana cards. And when I do teach tarot, I love teach tar teaching tarot. And I only teach individualized to students. Um, when I teach, I say that um, the, when the major arcana cards come out, it is life-changing. These are life-changing, very important crossroads, fork in the roads, uh, things that are brought to us. Well, with the first, first card was the first card coming out being the world card. Uh, we have ended a completion. Those karmic contracts have come to an end, and um, uh, and that's why our circle of friends is getting smaller and smaller and smaller to make room for those uh, that new karmic contracts to those new karmic contracts to come in. Um, and also, you see that laurel wreath that she's holding above her head. Um, this is applauding us for our accomplishments our, and celebrating our victories at this time. So the next one is the resurrection card. Oh, that's not the resurrection card. The next one is the resurrection card coming out of the dark and setting our feet on this new pathway of, um, look at all those butterflies transforming. And we see Gabriel trumpeting trumpeting that new phase of life, that new way of living, um, that new path to be taken, and of course, God's source creator, and this burst of light to show us where to go, how to serve, where to live, new communities, all of these very, very different things for us to serve in the best way. And the third one is, of course, the new path is the fool, is for us to come to it with a sense of wonderment and enchantment, knowing there is the dove. The dove is the Holy Spirit that we are co-creating with the divine every step of our way. The dog is there to show us the faith and to remember that with his satchel on his back, we have everything all the tools that we will ever need to create this new path, this new life of us. But we have to have the courage. We have to have the, the courage, the courage and feel that surging power inside to step forward on our new path. What an extraordinary story of this three. The ending of a cycle, the resurrection of our lives being birthed into a new life. And then the third one is stepping on that new path, which is the full. We've gone that full cycle of the hero's journey. We've completed that with the world card. And now we're stepping into a new cycle. And they want us to step onto it with joy and excitement. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride because you will be provided with what you need. Not necessarily what your ego wants, but it will be greater for your soul's um, evolvement and growth than you ever, ever could possibly imagine. The next three that came out, well, the first one did not surprise me because it was strength. The next, the star. And the next was the tower, three more major arcana cards. Now, of course, the first one is speaking about our strength and our courage, once again, to put all of that spiritual knowledge in, 
to action and to have the courage to step into our roles as leaders, as new thought form leaders on the planet in whatever way you wish to, but have the courage to put yourself out there. Uh, the next card that come in, comes in for us is the tower card. Now, many people, and I tell this to my tarot students, many people feel uh, and fear the tower card because they they think it's something bad, but it's not something bad. It's something that has ended in your life and needs to come to an end in order for um, for new blessings and new rewards to be showered upon you. So um, yes, uh, with those new paths presented, you might be presented with a new opportunity, a new offer, um, a new job or a new career or something. And it means that you'll have to pack up your home and, and move out of there pronto. You know, it's like um, give up your lease or, you know, take yourself to a different city, a different state. Uh, even some place, some people go, will be going, moving overseas. It's because your time where you are has come to an end. And it's time to then move forward. Um, so the tower in every aspect, because for the last 20 years through Angel Healing House and everything I've been doing, it, I say whatever you co-create with spirit to bring to you is for your highest good, even if you can't see it, because we learn some of our best lessons in contrast. And if something is over, done, finito, finished, um, it needs to get out of our lives um, as well as those relationships and connections in order to make room, uh, the, especially those relationships that are not working, um, in order to make room for the new path to come in. And the last one on this is the star. Wishes coming true, he he healings happening. Um, the star is also being in the spotlight. We spoke about, we spoke about that time of uh, Mars in Leo where this fiery energy gets friendly with this radiant, bright, look at me, look at me energy. <laughs> and, the, and it brings us to the point of, of having the courage to step into the spotlight, to be seen, to be heard, you know, um, taking something that was um, uh, secret or hidden away and now presenting ourselves in our full star quality. That was the middle bit, and then the end, well, we end with three amazing cards. The first card that's coming out for us is the Ace of Pentacles. This is the hand of God coming through and bringing in those people, those offers, those opportunities, those things that will show us our new path in which to step on to. Um, and... Um, it will, uh, the, the animals represented in my card is the bear, the bear coming out of the hibernation in the cave saying, oh, it's time to be seen and it's time to, you know, eat again. The rabbit is about our creativity um, and our fertility and procreating these ideas and getting them out, you can see, out into nature, out into the world. And the tortoise is certainly slow and steady, wins the race, very grounded, very, very grounded, tangible things now that will be presented to us for our prosperity, our abundance. Um, and then what comes in? Of course, the Ten of Pentacles, which is the happy family card. It is the card of legacy. It's the card of collaboration and working together together. Um, to bring forth something to leave a legacy to the planet. Um, it, it, it could, for um, many people in the collective, it could mean inheritances. Um, it could be um, that financial freedom that we need. Both of these cards, the pentacles, are about our finances uh, to be able to move forward. And as I'm speaking, there is a squirrel on my balcony <laughs> showing up and he's looking in the window. <laughs> oh, how sweet. <laughs> Squirrels are all about having fun. Squirrels are all about um, gathering things for the future. Now, this is, uh, this is a, a sign that this money will be coming in. We will spend it wisely and set ourselves up for the future for our last card, which is, of course, the Four of Wands. 
This is success after hard work. This is those of us that will be moving. There is our new homes. There is this joining together. This is often the marriage card. Uh, joining together with other people doesn't have to be a wedding. It could be joining together in a community to bring forth something of great achievement to leave as a legacy for the planet. But that will only happen if you allow yourself to have the courage and the bravery to step into those leadership roles. I hope all that's been helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do remember that you can also connect with me on Angel Healing House Blog Talk Radio Show, which is now in its 12th year, 12 and a half, and uh, airs every week on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Oh, and uh, the first 20 minutes, I uh, speak about um, the energies or you know what's going on in the planet um, to help us have direction and clarity. And then you can call in for free mini angel readings every week. So um, uh, do go out and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. And if you do need some direction and clarity, please do call me at Angel Healing House 831-277-3716 and my website is angelhealinghouse.com uh, for any of those services, intuitive counseling, those wonderful, revealing, inspiring angel tarot card readers, past life healings and ancestral healings and clearings in which the posse of angels and I hold your higher self's hand and we walk the timeline back to see which lives you lived in and what, uh, what people uh, that are in your life now featured in past lives. It's absolutely fascinating. And of course, to lift pain off the body, to bring the body back to peace and wholeness and tranquility, those wonderful Reiki energy sessions, which as I said before, can be done in my office or online through Distant Healing. You can find all of that information at Angel Healing House. Com. I'm wishing you so much love and as always, angel blessings. And I look so forward to speaking with you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.